Port forwarding allows users to forward traffic for a device from one port to another. Normally, the built-in firewall blocks incoming traffic from the internet. With a publicly routable WAN IP address, users can create rules to allow this traffic instead. If you're still not clear on what port forwarding is, then let us put it another way. Imagine you're in front of a brick wall that has a magic door. Use the right key or port, and it opens to the device you need to access. The way this works in the real world is that the firewall translates the WAN IP you enter along with the port number into the correct route to the LAN device. In our example, we have one of our IP switches connected to the LAN of our R1900 router. First, log into the administration console of the router. We're going to verify the local IP address of our IP switch and then reserve its address so that it never changes. Click on the networking tab on the left and select DHCP server. Find the device you need to access and click the reserve button to the right. Click yes to confirm you want to proceed. Now you should see the device listed under the reservation section. To configure the port forwarding rule, we'll go to the security tab and select zone firewall. Then select port forward and proxy from the list that drops down. Refer to the port forwarding rules section and click the add button. A window will open. Start by naming the rule. Confirm that the enable box is checked. Internet port or ports is where we will enter the port in which we want to forward the device. This is done because it's using port 80 locally, which is also used by a few other devices on the network. Enter the local computer or in other words, the network device, this being our switch. This should give you a list of the connected devices on your network so we can easily select our switch device. If you need to open a range of ports, enter the start port in the local port section first, followed by the end port. I'm just going to forward port 80 for this switch, so this will be entered in both fields here. For protocol, select either TCP, UDP, or both if you're not sure. Once you're done, click Save, and then OK. Now I'm going to first verify that my switch is responding at its local IP address and port. You can see this here. Next, I'll go back to the Cradle Point page and confirm the public IP address of my cellular connection. Click on Connection Manager from the left, then find your WAN connection and select it to display its IP address. At this point, I'll disconnect my Ethernet connection to the router to test access to my switch device. I'm already on a different Wi-Fi network with internet access, so in a new window on my browser, I'm entering the public IP address followed by a colon and the port I set, which is 8080. As you can see, it's taking me to the same login page where I had accessed my device locally, except now I'm coming in through a remote network and with a different port number. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel.